We've all been there, spending numerous hours clicking tiny boxes so we can save some time later down the line. If you ever use Unity rule tiles, you know how time consuming and tedious can it be just to convert a single tile set into a rule tile. And sometimes it doesn't even have all the features you'd need for your game, so you just end up spending even more time working around these problems. Well, don't you worry, because I have the perfect solution for it. I call it better rule tiles. It's a package that adds a tile map style editor that lets you create rule tiles in it. Using this tool, you can create rule tiles significantly faster than doing it the regular way. And there are also a number of features which are not present in the default editor. For example, this tool lets you create interactions between tiles and adds more default rules to choose from. Let's start by installing the package to your project. To get the package, head to the project's itch page where you can download it. There are two versions. The full version is paid, but there is a demo so you can try it out and decide whether it's worth it for you or not. After you've downloaded the package, you need to add it to your project. It comes in a zip file, so first you need to unpack it. After that, you can place the unpacked folder in either the assets or the packages folder of your project. To get to these folders, right click in your project window and click on show in explorer. I recommend adding it to the packages so it doesn't take up space next to your assets. To add the package, just copy the unpacked better rule tiles folder to your desired location and you're good to go. To open the editor, you first have to create a better rule tile container asset. You can find this in the create asset menu by navigating to create, 2D and tiles. This asset is the heart of the editor. This stores all the data of the editor and after you're done and generated the tiles, they'll also be stored in this asset. You can open the editor by double clicking on this asset or by clicking the open button in the inspector. You can create as many containers as you want and they will each have their own editor, so you can edit multiple tile maps simultaneously. To get started with creating rule tiles in the editor, you first need to import the sprites. To import sprites, you just simply drag and drop them into the editor. If you have a slice tile map, it will import all sprites. You can also add the sprites one by one if you need to. If the images appear as missing textures in the editor, you have to check the read and write enable option in the images import settings, after that, you have to close the editor and reopen it again, and your textures will appear. There's only one more thing you need before making the rule tiles. You need to actually create one first. In the bottom left corner of your screen, you can see a tile drawer. In there, click the Add Tile button to create a new tile. This is basically the same as creating a rule tile in the inspector. You can create as many tiles as you want, and can edit all these tiles all on the same grid. But let's only focus on one tile right now. And selecting this tile, you'll see an inspector window appearing in the bottom right corner. Here you can change the name of the tile, the preview image, the color and the shape of the preview image, the default tile options you would see when editing a regular rule tile, and some other specific settings to this tool, which we'll come back to later. Let's rename our tile and change the default settings of it. I'll rename the tile to Obstacle, change the color to a grayish coral that better represents the tiles, and I will set the default sprite to the sprite which has no neighbors. After that, you can click on the Apply Changes button to obviously apply the changes to your tile. We have set up everything for this tile, so we can start making the rules now. Select the brush tool from the top left corner of the screen. With this, you can start creating a rule. The process is similar to how the default rule tile works. You draw the tile where the tile and its neighboring tile is supposed to be and place the not same tile where an X would be. You can then use the picker tool to pick your desired sprite and place it in its place with the brush tool. The sprites and the tiles are on two separate layers. If a sprite is on top of a tile, that tile will use the sprite and its surrounding tiles to create a rule. You can check if there is a tile under your sprite by toggling the eye icon in the top right corner. If we go to the export options and click on the export button right now, you will see that only this one sprite is present in the tile, and its rules match the neighbors in the editor. You can also see that the settings we applied to the tile itself got applied to the exported tile, like the name and the default sprite. But this tool is not to just do the same thing as in the default inspector. Here, 
You can draw real scenarios to the grid and specify the rules of that, so it's way easier to create and manage all of the different rules. So let's do that. I'm gonna start by creating a 1 by 1, a 2 by 2 and a 3 by 3 square. Then export the rule tiles so we can check out the changes. As you can see, all the 10 different tiles got added to the rule tile with their respective rules. We can also check this tile in the scene too. Let's create a tile palette and add the tile onto it. Now if we draw with this tile you can see that if we create a block it will have the correct rules. Of course if we create other shapes this won't really work right now. So we need to add some other rules. This is also a good time to mention that even though you can place every tile right next to each other, sometimes you have to separate them so it covers more scenarios. In this example, you can see that even though we already specified these edge pieces that should go there, it still uses the default sprite. This is because we only specified a scenario where all three tiles around it are empty, which in this case is not true. So we have to create a scenario which will be used for every edge piece. We can take the 3x3 three three square and separate it to edges and corners. I use the select tool along with the copy and paste functions to create a duplicate of the 3x3 three three square. After that, I use the eraser tool to remove all the sprites and the brush tool along with the delete tile to delete the tiles. You can also delete the 2x2 two two square because this tile is already in the 3x3 three three configuration. Now if you check the tiles, the edge pieces are properly displayed. Using these techniques you can create a complete tile set. There's a sample rule tile included with the full package, so if you're having trouble figuring out the rules, or just want to save some time, you can use this template to create your own rule tile. Copy pasting does not work across different editors unfortunately, but it should be fairly easy to copy the layout from one editor to another. Or if you want to create a new tile based on this, you can just duplicate the asset and edit it directly. I'll do the latter because it will save some time. And with that, we have a fully working rule tile with every possible scenario, done under 10 minutes. So far we only covered how we can speed up the creation of rule tiles, but this tool is capable of doing way more than just that. Let's say you want to add slopes to your tile set, but because slopes are just basically corner pieces in disguise, you can just add them to the same rule tile. So you create a different rule tile. But this rule tile doesn't connect to the non-sloped variants, so it's completely useless. Well, you guessed it, there's a solution for that. I've set up a few <laughs> rules for slopes. I know this looks a bit intimidating, but the layer doesn't matter right now. You can have as many or as little slopes as you want, and the process will be the same. So, I've created four new tiles, one for each corner and set up the rules that are only specific to the slopes. If we tell this out right now, you'll see that it doesn't really work as you'd want it to. If you just draw with it regularly, only the slope parts will show up. The other tiles will display the default sprite. It is quite obvious why it isn't working. There are no rules set up for any of these scenarios. But you surely don't want to recreate the base style map four more times, so you can have slopes. Well, you don't have to. If you select the tile and look into the tile inspector window, you'll see an option called unique tile. This is set to true by default, but if you change it to false, a drop down will appear, where you can select another tile. If this toggle is set to false, the selected tile will be used to fill any missing rules in the tile. So if we select obstacle, it will add the missing rules from the obstacle tile to this tile. Let's change all the slopes to use the obstacle tile as a base, then generate the tiles. Now if you draw with these slopes again, you'll see that the sprites that were previously defaulted now will display the proper sprite, based on the obstacle rule tile. You can use the tile now as it is, but most likely you want to use them together. Luckily for you, there is an option for that too. For this, you have to look at the add variations option. The tile you're editing will connect to any other tile you add here. You just simply select the tile from the drop down and click the add button to add it. I want all five tiles to connect to each other, so I will add all of them to all of the tiles. If you generate these tiles one more time and try them out, you'll see that now they are connecting to each other, so you can add those slopes wherever you want. 
There is one more feature I want to show before moving to another tileset. You were probably wondering for some time now if you could add randomized or animated tiles, or even extend the range where the tile checks for neighbors. These are all possible with this tool. If you go to the top left corner of your screen, you can see an icon with a mouse and a cog. That's the grid cell inspector tool. After selecting the tool and clicking a tile on the grid, the inspector window will show the properties of that specific grid cell. Here you can change the settings of the tiling rule the same way you could in the regular rule tile, with the only difference that this grid only specifies where to check and not what to check for. So it's way faster to add the large number of places. If you have some tiles on the grid with modified properties, there's an option in the top right corner to highlight them, so you can find them easier. I've showed everything I can with these tile maps, but what if you want to work with isometric or even hexagonal tiles? The tool supports all grid types you'd want to work with. In the export options in the top right corner, there's the grid type option, which is set to square by default. Changing this will change the grid shape. It's better to do this before starting to work on your tile maps, because the hexagonal tile maps, for example, use a different coordinate system, so changing between these two grid types can mess with the placement of the tiles. You can also change the size of the grids in the drop down next to the export option, or add an offset if your tiles are not aligned properly, along with a few other editor settings. I have lots of tips and tricks that I could show you regarding this tool, but it would be quite a long video, so I will wrap it up here. If you need a more detailed description of this tool, there's a documentation I've written where you can find descriptions of every setting and option there is in the tool. You can also join my Discord server if you want any help. Both links are in the description of this video, along with the page for the tool itself. I hope you like this tutorial, and especially the tool I created. That's it for this video. Bye!